Good morning. It is July 21 and I am in Penticton still, but this is my last day, therefore my last hike. I've been doing the Kettle Valley Rail Trail and I've been loving it, but I stopped yesterday. I had to turn around at a certain spot and I thought I would pick up from there today, but I read more and I want to do this section instead. So I kind of misled you yesterday as to my intentions, but I think this will be a really neat trail. I'm at the Naramata section and my aim is to get to the little tunnel. So that sounds pretty enticing, doesn't it? It's a gorgeous morning. It was 35 degrees out yesterday, so I decided to go swimming at Skaha Lake. I was there for a couple hours, but then all the people chased me away. <laughs> I, there's just crowds there and I don't like that. But anyway, it was nice to experience it and cool off. And I am a water baby, I love the water. So that was really fun. Hiking and swimming, like this is like the perfect adventure for me. You know, a pine forest situation is not my favorite because it means that it's arid usually. But I tell you what, I'm appreciating it more because there are no bugs. When you live in an arid area, you are bug free and I love that. Ah, my first view. It is smoky out, it's getting really quite smoky. Today's the most pronounced day so far. In our last hike, we learned that the Jews not only had a weekly Sabbath, but an annual Sabbath of Sabbath or solemn Sabbath celebration. And we also recapped the meaning of the Passover and the Feast of Unleavened Bread. Today, we will learn about the other five feasts and their meanings. So the Feast of First Fruits says, And the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to the children of Israel and say to them, When you come into the land which I give to you and reap its harvest, then you shall bring a sheaf of the first fruits of your harvest to the priest. He shall wave the sheaf before the Lord to be accepted on your behalf. On the day after the Sabbath, the priest shall wave it. And you shall offer on that day, when you wave the sheaf, a male lamb of the first year, without blemish, as a burnt offering to the Lord. Its grain offering shall be two-tenths of an ephah of fine flour mixed with oil, an offering made by fire to the Lord for a sweet aroma, and its drink offering shall be of wine, one-fourth of a hin. You shall eat neither bread nor parched grain nor fresh grain until the same day that you have brought an offering to your God. It shall be a statute forever throughout your generations in all your dwellings. The presentation of the first fruits was a part of the celebration of the Days of Unleavened Bread. It took place on the day after the Sabbath, the 16th of Abib. This day was neither a holy convocation nor a Sabbath. On the 14th day of Abib, a certain section of a field of barley was marked off to be cut down in preparation for the presentation on the 16th. Three select men cut the barley in the presence of witnesses, having already tied the sheaves together before cutting them. After being cut, the sheaves were all tied together into one large sheaf, and this sheaf was presented to the Lord as the sheaf of the first fruits. In addition, a perfect male lamb, a cereal offering mingled with oil, and a drink offering were presented to God. Not until this was done could Israel make use of the fruits of the fields for themselves. This ceremony pointed to Christ, the first fruits, and then to those of us who are Christ at his second coming. Jesus represents the first fruits in that he was raised from the grave and then presented himself before his heavenly Father. Jesus died on Friday. He rested in the grave on Sabbath. Then when he rose on the first day of the week, he ascended to his Father to hear the words of God's acceptance of his sacrifice. Believe it or not, this creek is giving me such a nice, cool breeze. And walking in a pine forest is cooling as well. Oh, that is Robinson Creek. 
Next comes the Feast of Weeks. This feast came on the 50th day after the presentation of the wave sheaf. So it was usually at the end of May or early June. In New Testament times, it was known as Pentecost, from a Greek word meaning 50. As the wave sheaf was presented at the beginning of the harvest season, before any of the new yield could be used, so Pentecost marks the end of the harvest season. Barley was the beginning of the season, and wheat marked the end of the harvest season. It was the joyous acknowledgement of Israel's dependence upon God as the giver of all good things. At this time, a sheaf was not presented, but rather two wave loaves of fine flour baked with leaven, together with seven lambs, a bullock, and two rams. This was accompanied by a goat for a sin offering and two lambs for a peace offering. As you will recall, in the Passover celebration, no leaven was to be used. But now at Pentecost, the bread was to be baked with leaven. Pentecost symbolizes the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. There were 50 days that passed after Jesus was raised from the dead that the Holy Spirit came upon the disciples. At Pentecost, the labors of the disciples were added to those of Christ. The result was glorious for the kingdom of heaven. So just like leaven or yeast multiplies and grows, so the Holy Spirit working in people's lives grows the kingdom of God. Oh, there's some trails through the woods if you want, but I'm going to pass. It was also at this time that God commanded when harvesting to leave some in the fields for the poor to gather. And this is just my thoughts, but notice that God did not say to harvest it all and give to the poor. The poor still had to work and glean for it themselves. Maybe this is a principle that we could apply today. Just a thought. So pretty way up here. I made it! Oh, it's not that deep. I can see the other side already. Okay, this is spectacular on the other side of the tunnel now. Wow. I wonder why this side is paved. Man, next time I come to Penticton, I am bringing my bicycle. About a couple hundred meters past the tunnel, you got a little outhouse and what? A trash can? Who comes to collect the trash can? Amazing. Only in Canada, eh? Because there is no vehicular access here. Okay, I guess I'll go back. But it was really worth it to come. I just think of them having to blast this out way back then. And this is just a little tunnel. Ah, so fun. Next comes the Feast of Trumpets. Then the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to the children of Israel, saying, 
In the seventh month, on the first day of the month, you shall have a Sabbath rest, a memorial of blowing of trumpets, a holy convocation. You shall do no customary work on it, and you shall offer an offering made by fire to the Lord. It was a shout to acclaim God as king in the camp of Israel. It was on the first day of the seventh month, which is now called Rosh Hashanah, or the Jewish New Year. And it appears to be a reminder of God's protective sovereignty. It was a holy convocation, for on the day the trumpets were blown, you knew the Day of Atonement was at hand, and the first nine days of the month were spent in preparation for it. So that segues into the Day of Atonement, or Judgment Day. And the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Also the tenth day of this seventh month shall be the day of atonement. It shall be a holy convocation for you. You shall afflict your souls and offer an offering made by fire to the Lord. And you shall do no work on that same day, for it is the day of atonement, to make atonement for you before the Lord your God. For any person who is not afflicted in soul on that same day shall be cut off from his people. And any person who does any work on that same day, that person I will destroy from among his people. You shall do no manner of work. It shall be a statute forever throughout your generations in all your dwellings. It shall be to you a Sabbath of solemn rest, and you shall afflict your souls on the ninth day of the month at evening. From evening to evening you shall celebrate your Sabbath. God condemns those who fail to humbly show loyalty to him on the Day of Atonement. This is the time when God's sanctuary, which represents his administration and reputation, is cleansed of sins in the sense that he is shown that he is right when he has already forgiven the loyal and in condemning the disloyal among his nominal people. I talked about this in depth a few hikes back, so I'll leave a link to it at the end if you are interested in learning more. Lastly is the Feast of Tabernacles. The fifteenth day of the seventh month shall be the Feast of Tabernacles for seven days to the Lord. On the first day there shall be a holy convocation. You shall do no customary work on it. For seven days you shall offer an offering made by fire to the Lord. On the eighth day you shall have a holy convocation, and you shall offer an offering made by fire to the Lord. It is a sacred assembly, and you shall do no customary work on it. Also on the fifteenth day of the seventh month, when you have gathered in the fruit of the land, you shall keep the feast of the Lord for seven days. On the first day there shall be a Sabbath rest, and on the eighth day a Sabbath rest. And you shall take for yourselves on the first day the fruit of beautiful trees, branches of palm trees, the boughs of leafy trees, and willows of the brook. And you shall rejoice before the Lord your God for seven days. You shall keep it as a feast to the Lord for seven days in the year. It shall be a statute forever in your generations. You shall celebrate it in the seventh month. You shall dwell in booths for seven days. All who are native Israelites shall dwell in booths, that your generations may know that I made the children of Israel dwell in booths when I brought them out of the land of Egypt. I am the Lord your God. This was the last feast of the religious year during our month of October, when the autumn harvest was done and the fruits had all been gathered in. It was a joyous occasion for everyone. The Day of Atonement was passed, all misunderstandings were cleared up, and the sins were confessed and put aside. Branches were used to make booths in which the Israelites were to live during the feast. On the Day of Atonement, people were to afflict their souls at the Feast of Tabernacles, they were to rejoice. It was altogether the happiest day of the year when friends and neighbors renewed friendship and dwelt together in love and harmony. In this respect, it was prophetic of the time when the great ingathering of God's people shall take place and people will come from the east and the west and shall sit down with Abraham and Isaac and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. The Feast of Tabernacles was commemorative of the time when the children of Israel lived in tents in the wilderness. The Healing Hiker rating of this little tunnel on the KVR is a 4 out of 5. That was pretty special. Just one annoyance is the cyclists. Lots of cyclists. Only one other gal was walking it. 
but I now have a new pet peeve, so I've really been having to practice my Christianity, and I've been failing sometimes. These bicyclists, they feel like they need to ring their bell at me, even though I'm walking on the very edge of the past, and they have plenty of room to pass me, and there's nobody coming, and yet they feel like they have to ring their bell, and it's just very annoying to me. So, God forgive me. I know that some people still keep these feasts, even though it is not required anymore. There are so many different festivals and annual celebrations that churches celebrate even now, like Christmas and Easter and St. Patrick's Day and Ash Wednesday and Epiphany, etc., etc. So I feel like if they help bring you closer to Jesus, then there's no harm in celebrating them. I myself enjoy celebrating Easter and Christmas. It is well to remember how God has led us in times past. It is well to bring to mind his providences, for we are sometimes prone to complain at the way he is leading us today. Is it not well to think of the many blessings God has bestowed upon us and the wonderful ways he has guided our lives? To do so would make us more appreciative and thankful. And thankfulness is a vital part of religion.